After a bitterly fought campaign, people in Alberta are at the polls today. And if you haven't voted yet, you have until 8 p.m. local time to cast your ballot. Okay, there we go. It's going, it's going, it's going. NDP leader Rachel Notley went to this Edmonton polling station to cast her vote. Notley is asking Albertans to stay the course with her government for another four years. United Conservative leader Jason Kenney says his party is the only one who will get the economy working again. Whoever wins, we may have to wait a day or two to know the final results. A change in rules led to hundreds of thousands of advance voters. And we've got it all covered for you. Vashi Capello, is host of Power and Politics, is standing by in the Alberta capital. She'll, she'll bring us analysis from Edmonton. But we're going to start in the foothills. The CBC's Aaron Collins has been taking a look at a campaign that features a fierce battle for Calgary. So, Aaron, you're at a polling station there. What's the mood of voters after such a highly charged and controversial campaign? Andrew, you know, I think the sense here is people are glad it's over. It has been one of the most divisive and angry as far as tone elections that I can remember covering politics in this province for, for two decades. So I think people are happy to have it in the rearview mirror after today and hoping that the tone can improve uh, whoever comes out on top after today. So as you speak to voters, uh, you know, they really echo sort of the, the, the issues might have gotten lost a little bit in this divisive election and would have liked a little more focus on that. Have a, have a listen to what some of those uh, who cast a ballot had to say earlier today. Yeah, it's the nastiest one that I can remember. And I've lived here all my life. One of them engaged in too much personal smears right away and I felt wasn't promoting the party policies and platforms enough. That, that, that puts you off a little bit. Nobody likes to see that running on personality instead of politics. It was intense. It was, it was a lot of hatred. There was a lot of anger. I thought a lot of um, people were angry without um, really researching party policies. There was just a lot of outlash. Um, there was signs on our street that were vandalized. Um, it felt really intense. So really intense, but with that intensity came some pretty incredible engagement. We were seeing numbers you mentioned earlier in your intro in the advance voting. Almost 700,000 Albertans have already voted in this election. Just give you a sense of, of how big that number is. It's more than triple from the last election in 2015. And there's 2.6 million eligible voters in the entire province. So 25% of the potential voting pool already cast a ballot before election day. That's huge. That sure is. And why was Calgary such a focal point for the main political parties? You know, they say in Alberta, you know, you need two out of three sort of voting pools to win an election. You got Edmonton, you've got rural Alberta, and you've got Calgary. Now, rural Alberta generally fairly conservative, Edmonton fairly progressive in the way they vote. Calgary can swing. Calgary can move. Last time around 15 seats in this out of, of this city out of 22 voted uh, for NDP candidates. We'll need to see a swing there if, uh, if the government is to change. We will need to see the NDP hold on to the majority of those seats or make gains if they're to hold power. So it's really the key battleground. And here in Calgary, the big issue, of course, is a, a sputtering economy. After four years sort of trying to get back on track, still 25% of the offices in downtown Calgary, once occupied by oil and gas companies, vacant now, nearly 8% unemployment. And if you ask people in this city what matters to them, what their ballot box issue is, it's the economy. Interestingly though, the mayor here, Nahed Nenshi, says really neither of the main parties has suggested anything that he thinks can get things back on track. Have a listen. I was surprised that not, neither of the parties, really none of the parties, had an immediate plan to think about what to do to attract investment to Calgary, to deal with the unemployment situation, and to help those small businesses. There is nothing any of these parties are planning that would get the Trans Mountain Pipeline built five minutes earlier. There are some things they're planning that might actually slow it down, believe it or not. Well, you heard the big word for this election for many Calgarians, that's pipelines and how to get them built not really sure from the mayor's perspective that either party has a plan that's going to get that happening soon. Aaron, thank you. That is the CBC's Aaron Collins live in Calgary.